proudest day and the proudest time in the, the seat of a rally here. Because that day and that hour and those minutes, I got the butt between my teeth. You know, I really stood up and was counted and said, this is not getting away. I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me, what are we doing? I said, we're going for gold, Barrett. That's all we said. I can still picture that run. That was just the best, best run ever. Welcome along to Crunching Gears, the Rally Podcast, Season 3, Episode 15. Connor, we have another jam packed show. We know we say this every week, but this is it's getting ridiculous at this stage. <laughs> We never plan it for it to be this busy, but it just kind of ends up. But it, come here, it, it's great. It's it's testament to the amount of, of of activity that's gone on out there, and there's so many people to get a chance to speak to. Yeah, because there's so much good news, and it's great to get a chance to share that good news. You know, I suppose before we start the usual, can you please like, share, subscribe? All those things make a huge difference. So, uh, this week we look back at Bishop's Court. We catch up with uh, the one on co-driver Niall Burns, the second place Darren Curran, the co-driver there, and then Kyle White, third place driver. And we have them all in together, and that's great, crack. And also last weekend, then we have Se- uh, Seb Perez and Gary McHenney, who won the historic uh, rally Majorca. Um, that you know they had a great run in the, the Stratus, and the, anybody has seen the videos, seen what the, the Stratus looks like in tarmac trim, the noise and the big wheels and all that. So, and then we look forward to West Cork, and we'll catch up there with Sinead Kenny, um, Mickey Galvin, and Kevin O'Driscoll. Uh, also last weekend, but now we didn't get a chance to chat to anybody, the Malcolm Walsh stage is like a great event, well, it <laughs> could have been a fantastic event for our local guys, but uh, unfortunately it just didn't all happen. Um, at one point, uh, Gary Pearson and their own Hannah uh, Davison was leading the rally, and unfortunately they got a puncher, and then uh, Vivian Hamill and Lorcan Moore uh, were really challenging for the lead as well, and, and took an, event, an eventful second overall at the finish up too. But uh, you know, great result there for them as well too. But Connor uh, Bishop's Court last weekend, second round of the Northern Ireland Championship. We, we said it at the start of the year. This championship's looking stronger and stronger with every event. It is, you know, from from cracking entries to cracking competition at the top end, and you know, again, we said it before, and throughout the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it was a great event, and and certainly from watching the wasn't there, but from you know watching social media and keeping on top of it, like it was fairly competitive, and you know, Johnny Greer didn't get it easy. Definitely not. Definitely not. You know, it's great to see. You know, the the competition, the level of competition going up, and the the guys are all singing the praises of Balmain Motor Club. They, you know the event they put on, the way they've utilised the the Bishop's Court track there and all too, and great to see. But I think we'll catch up with the three guys, so we'll hear from Niall, uh, Darren, and then Kyle. Uh, Bishop's Court at the weekend. Niall, you took another one, but you, uh, you didn't get it all your own way this time. No, these boys from Redcastle, like geez, they're getting very quick, you know, and uh, they really put us under pressure. And there's another BRC superstar to turn up as well and try to spoil our party there, but. Um... No, he was nip and tuck all day now. It was only came down to the last two stages. I think it was in the second last stage. Me and Johnny got ahead. And then we eventually got the win by 3.9. But no, in fairness now, Darren, Darren and Aaron pushed us hard all day. And Kyle was there and he was very close. And like obviously Stuart Biggerstaff was unlucky with um, his wee uh, incident on the stage. You know, losing the wheel. And then Philip Allen was really on the charge there as well. But um, no, it's been, it was very competitive now. We really had to work for it. But no, we were delighted to get it now. Yeah, and like you know, the, the new layout in Bishop's Court seems to you know like very positive. You know, no catching cars on the stage, and the layout looked really good. Any videos or pictures I've seen so far? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Now, like it was fantastic layout. They've obviously spent a lot of money there, and it's all credit to Palin Hinch District War Club for putting in that amount of work. You know, and they had said that they were going to try and do something for a while to avoid having the splits. Obviously, you know, cars catching each other and stuff, and competitors getting frustrated. And they said they were going to work on it. And in fairness, they did. And they pulled off a fantastic venue there now. And it's it was a great, great rally. And it's all been positive feedback from it so far. And we really enjoyed it. And any competitor I've been speaking to really enjoyed it. So, you know, not a great layout and fantastic. And hopefully now we can develop that even further now going into the event next year. Excellent. And Darren, from your point of view, like yourself and Aaron, you know, the pace, you showed the pace and um, previous rounds, but nice to pull it all together and just, you know, within, come on within four seconds of Johnny Greer's, it's, it's, it's not a bad achievement. 
Uh, <clears throat> no, we were uh, we're happy enough there. I'd just like to correct Nile there as well. And it was actually 3.7, not 3.9. <laughs> 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 but um no it was uh no we were happy enough now we got the again we got johnny a good run for it as long time as anybody could kind of get near him so we were um no we were happy enough just to be close to be there with him it was a, a good crack all day now yeah and the yeah. arm has really took to the polo like he seems to be settled in well to it now Aye, that's that's really our fourth event on it. The first one I had Turkey run there, we won hat and then we went to Bishop's Court there and we got fourth and down in Mayo, which was just ugh, Mayo was worse than Galway for slippiness and also it was kinda that would have been the first closed road in the car. Um so it was kinda hard to know to get a good feel of the car down there. But um so and then we went there, Bishop's Court made a good enough run there, so we'll find out now and uh, possibly the circuit that it was talked about there. On the way home on Saturday, so that could be <laughs> that could be the next run out on her, I would say. But if not, it'll be Monaghan then, anyways. Excellent, excellent. And Kyle, you know, for you, you're you, this was the whole idea of starting the Northern Championship was to get you know seat time ahead of the BRC, and like you know, to come away with a third place there at the weekend, you have to be very happy with that because this year in particular, the level in the Northern Ireland Championship is it's as good as anywhere at the minute. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I totally agree with you. Um, you see, all the guys in the Northern Ireland Championship are completely cutting it up in the Tarmac Championship. Maybe they even they go and you know filter out into different championships in Europe, maybe. But uh, oh, the problem is when you're arriving up to Bishop's Court, you're so full of hopes, and you see Nell Burns and Darren Kern are camping at the circuit a couple of weeks prior. You know, <laughs> so uh, no, listen, we're uh, no, we turned up at high hopes, all the rest of it, but. Uh, the two guys at the front that were just completely in the league of their own. They're so I couldn't believe the speed in. Uh so absolutely fair play to them. But um no, it's good also they're great guys as well. You know, there's a lot of personalities going about it at the minute. Like Darren Kern, you you know, we're on here. We're basically flabbergasted that we're involved with them, you know, that sort of way. But uh no, it was uh well, we actually just uh, just a wee private conversation between me and Sean. We came in off the first I think it was the first stage, and I was straight on the rally scoring the phone, looking right. So what's happening here? And I see here, oh, Sean, we're only 0. 0.7 behind Johnny and Neller. Oh, great, great. Here's me, oh, you're not going to believe who's leading this. And he says, Who's that? And he says, Arn and Darren. And uh, privately, we had a wee thing there going on that uh, if I had if I'd beat Aaron and Darren, they were going to change to their Facebook profile photo to a uh, picture of me and then vice versa. So, uh, we says, hi, we're going to go out here in stage two, we're going to rip it up, we're going to do this, and then I think they took now about five or ten out of us then. But, uh, no, it was very humbling, obviously, to see the pace, and uh, as I say, just touching what uh, Nell said, they're a real top, top-notch circuit, and what they've done there at Bishop's Court, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed the concrete section that they've revamped, and, uh, yeah, going forward, it'll be a rally I'd hope to, you know, near enough every, near enough every year. Yeah, because like, I, I spoke to Brian Crawford last week, and he says they have utilised every inch of the, you know, they've used parts of the car park, everything, just to get, you know, to get as many kilometres as possible for the, the, you know, the crews. And like, I think that all paid off. Like, I seen the the infield un, section that they had, they had clay banks up, and you're going through it. Like, not many clubs would go to that effort. No, they really wouldn't. I think what they were actually doing, they were ringing around neighbours and trying to get their houses knocked down just to build lanes <laughs> in through their driveway. But uh, I couldn't actually believe, you know, for a race circuit, you don't get, what is it, three or four mile, you know, loop of just one without having to do a merge somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's great to see the idea that they came off with. And, you know, uh, basically, you're, when you're not merging with cars, you're taking away a risk factor too, because there's been a couple of times, namely Alton Park, Women near had a massive collision with an Evo 9. Uh, they're, they're the sort of things you don't, you know, have to contend with then, which is really good. So, uh, fair play to them. Yeah. And, like, Darren, <coughs> you talked about, you know, this is like your third time now in the track and all this here. Like, you put uh, Bishop's Court up there with any of them? I would probably say, to be quite honest with you, that's probably the best of the circuits that we've ever been on now. The, uh, like, it was four and a half miles, just under eight kilometers high, and there was everything in it. There was high speed stuff, 
there was tight, twisty stuff. There was everything you could want on it. Like it was definitely, I would say, you know, like Shackleton would be a big favorite of ours there. But I would say that would give Shackleton a good run for it. There, it was really, really good and well put together. Like, mm-hmm. and the, you know, the, the polo just seemed to really take to it. Like early in the morning too, in the the, the dry, dusty conditions, and Aaron was just like you know. Bl- very comfortable right from the get go. Sometimes the arm can, you know, maybe the first stage he just takes that wee bit of time to get going. But right from the get go, he was on it on Saturday morning. I well, normally it's or Norm in the way home before he gets going. To be quite honest <laughs> with you, but um, no, in the morning there we had a bit of an advantage over the boys there because we were running down eleventh in the road, and the other guys kind of had to clear the dust, so they had a wee bit of a diff, a diff, bit of a diff advantage there. But um. So that kind of gave us the jump in the morning there too. Uh, well, we don't win a tires day avoid thanks to <coughs> Kyle there. But uh, <laughs> apart from that, now it was uh, that we jumped there. But as it as it got the dust cleared every stage, like it was kind of more of an even path there. Like, but uh, no, it was definitely very good now. Excellent. And now you know the, that it, now that's two ones in the the Northern Ireland Championship puts you in a good place now going forward. Yeah, it does, obviously. And look, uh, Maiden City stage is coming up now, obviously. And um, back to the rally to the state. Hopefully, stage we've made on in the rally in 22. But uh, me and Johnny had a short time rally back then, unfortunately. But um, no, we're looking forward to getting on the closed road now. And obviously, there's so many competitors there. Like when you look at the line of our five machine, it's turned out for the Northern Ireland Championship this year. And everyone seems to be committed to the championship, which is great too. So there's going to be some good battles coming up for the three closed road events. But I just uh, mentioned what Aaron said there, you know, Aaron, you know, sometimes he's a slow starter, but it all balanced out when I seen him on the way and down Patrick with the bonnet up on the van driving home. So I just look at you as look caught up with him just later in the day for a second. It's the most navigator then, though. The navigator took off and left the driver, you know, there's no talk about this, like, you know. Most... <laughs> no, <laughs> Every man for themselves on the way home, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Where's this podcast going, boys? And now the the new like uh, social media side behind it now the Northern Ireland Championship. You know, there's going to be this YouTube video come out. You know, at the end of the week, and you know the live updates as it happened on you know from the day and all. It's really lifting it up to another level as well. Oh no, definitely like the social media content and everything they're doing, it'll, it'll drive a, like any of the top championships there as well. And like Adam's doing a fantastic job there, obviously, and all the championship organizers to get this off the ground. And the wee highlight reel that was coming up there is fantastic. And there's so much up, as you say, there's so many updates throughout the day too, which is fantastic to see. And it's a boost for sponsors too, like, you know, that you're getting so much media coverage too. And it, it's great that we can promote some of the sponsors as well via that. So no, hey, it's a welcome addition to the championship this year. And I think, you know, as the, the rounds go on the closed road, they're going to be doing even more, and which is fantastic, and credit to them for bringing to the, the series this year. Yeah, and like, Darren, you know, you've been the superstar you are. Like, this is another opportunity for you to reach out to your fans and sign even more autographs with all this now going on as well. <laughs> well, you stop swelling that man's head. <laughs> oh, God. The, uh, no, the whole social media bit is, you can notice it this year, like, uh, as Niall was saying there, that, there's a report after every stage there and before the rally there's a lot of or media going on about it and after the rally like and uh that new youtube program that's going on now as well it definitely is a good job so it is like mm-hmm. i even managed to get my boots signed there by sean topping and everything out the weekend so yeah and, yeah, another you, bonus. and would you be putting them in the glass case now will they be going in now like that's that they'll be retired now and need the new pair bought now uh, well, Sean hasn't got long left himself because he's the right age, you know, so within a short time, they'll be worth money, like I would say, so they won't. <laughs> they could be on eBay before long. <laughs> <laughs> and Kay, like from your point of view, we've talked before, you know, you sort of small team, to get the kind of exposure that this new uh, media side from the Northern Ireland Championship is providing, it must be a godsend for you to get your, your name out there and get your, your sponsors out there. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Uh, you know, we're very lucky this year. We've had a lot of people coming on board, and um, the only reason I think I'm into the R five class is that car came up at a, at a complete cutthroat price out of nowhere. Because the idea was we we're maybe going to take a year or two out, or you know, try and build up a couple of funds and go straight for a rally two car. Because you feel that you're maybe at a disadvantage when you're going for a 2016 car, which is what we have. 
it's the, the earliest evolution that you can actually get. But uh, no, listen, that car came up with the money. And um, I just thought to myself, if I take a year or two out, that's a year or two that I don't get to see Darren Curran. And that is uh, in itself an awful, you know, it's a big blow. So, uh, no, we decided to go for the car then. And, uh, yeah, I think we did make the right choice in the end. This, you know, value for money, I don't think you can beat that type of car, the Hyundai R5, because um, I think it just has a bit of everything, you know, that sort of way. Mm-hmm. This is only your your second uh, your second rally in an R5 car. Like, you know, to come away with third place, and you've seen some of the names behind you, like previous winners of events, you know, guys that were uh, umpteen rallies in R5 cars on below their belt. You have to be very proud. Yeah, no, we're, as I say, we're absolutely delighted. Secretly going into the weekend, I said, I want the podium because obviously we had the Gremlins at Kirkiston and we didn't get finished. But uh, you're going up against the absolute best of the best and Johnny and Aaron and Stuart and whatnot at the top there. So to uh, to be mixing it with them early on, OK, they did leave me a wee bit at the end. But just to show that there's potential there to go match them and they're at the absolute top of their game and credit to them. Like It's great to be involved because... If you want to be the best, you have to beat the best inevitably. So, uh, yeah, it's good to be up against that. And uh, going forward, I'll have to try and maybe have a better go at them. <laughs> <laughs> and, Darren, like, you know, that, like, having them races that got there, that helps you just lift your game as well. You know, you just would rather be involved in that competition and even finish second and get an easy one, I would suspect. I would, surely. I, well, like, whenever you're in a tight battle, like, we win the seconds like we were there all day on Saturday you drive far better you drive far better yourself like and you're pushing yourself on the whole times and you're finding more things out about the car what it can do and sometimes what it can't do and stuff like that but uh, even that last stage there we come off that last stage we went on there at 1.9 behind Johnny and Nile, and uh, we come off the stage and I says to him it's not often I have to tell him this now but I says to him, like, uh, I've never seen you drive like that before. Everything was just pitch perfect. In, uh, and I said to myself, I'd be surprised if Johnny beat that. And then he went and took 1.8 out of us. But uh, like, if, if you were going about there and you were 10 seconds in front or 10 seconds behind, you wouldn't have drove half as hard. Like, yeah. everything was through onto the, that last stage there. And <laughs> only for the tight battle, you wouldn't be there. Like, mm-hmm. And now, uh, whenever you hear that there, like, you know, they were pitch perfect. You used to must have been needing 11 tons in that last stage. All I kept telling Johnny is if Darren Curran beats me, I will not hear the end of it for a long time. <laughs> um, no, I will not listen to this man for a whole week. He will get too much money. Whatever you need to do, rub every tire, just go for it. Do not let that man beat us. That's exactly what I said before I went into that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> But isn't but you know but isn't that what it's about? Like you know, you're oh, all you know you're all about rallying long enough now to know that you know Malcolm Olsen's not going to come and knock on the door on Monday morning. You're out for the crack and the bit of fun. You take it very seriously, no doubt about it. But it's all about having a wee bit of fun as well. Oh, look, I can say the same. Make sure that in the service park there between stages, like as you can see, like there's no difference. We're the same. Remember at the service park, there's laugh and there's banter. When the helmet goes on, you go off the lane. It's a different story. But you know, we're all doing it because we, we love to do it. Like you know, we we love the competition. We love being out in the stages, but we love the banter in between as well. So, and that's what's great about Northern Ireland Championship too. Like you know, you've so many like you have so many good friends doing the championship as well, and we're away and it's not too much time away from work, it's not too much time away from home, it's ideal championship, and when you get battles like that, it just makes it even better, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, going forward now, like, um, West Cork coming up now at the weekend, like, it's full steer into that now, the, the new three-day format and all that brings its own challenges as well. Yeah, obviously, um, extra midweek rec, you know, you're way that wee bit long, you know, you're probably away for five days for the Australia now compared to what we would have been before. But look, you know, it's it's fantastic to see that the, um, the, the organisers put on the, to get the extra stages and obviously support the event got to run it. And look, as everyone's been saying for years, you know, there's how many competitors travel up from that part of the world to do three days in Donegal, you know, which is a fair point. So, you know, we can't really say too much having to go down there, but um. No, look, um, the stages look good as they always do. You know, you have your classics there, you have Artfield, you have Ring, you have Dun Worley, there's parts of Sam's Cross and maybe a few different variations of stages. And as everything as everything else, you just hope the weather's on your side for West Cork as well because the rain comes down, it can be very slippy. But uh, no, hey, we're lucky we've our prep we've a prep done, we're getting ready for Recky now and we're looking forward to the battles down there ahead. 
Yeah, and do you, do you feel you know coming away from Bishop Court like you you're race ready as such? You know, you know you've you have the the shakedown done in the car. Yeah, well, obviously we had a bit of a disappointment in Galway there, you know, puncture in the very first stage, which wasn't good in a wee altercation. Then later on, we got good mileage on Sunday, but, you know, the confidence was a bit down with two wins in the back there, you know, and the car seems to be running well, you know, it does build, it does lift you a wee bit, you know, and you need that going into these rounds because, look, you're racing some of the best there, Callum and Keith, just to name a few, going down there, Matt Edwards there as well, and Josh, you have to be on your game there. So obviously just coming off the seat time there on Saturday with the win, you are going in that wee bit more confident and hopefully it all pays dividends now come Friday afternoon. Excellent. And Darren, from yourself and Aaron now going forward, uh, you shall not make the trip to West Cork, but are you going down yourself? Um, no, no, I'm not going to bother going down the Earth. Hey, it's To me, it's just it's a week away there nearly and I just, no, it's not for me at all. I've, enough to, I've eight events done this year already and... See to go down to West Cork, it's just it's just a no no to me, so it's not so I'm gonna give it a mess this year. And then when's the next time yourself and Arnold be out then? Um, as I was gonna say, they were talked about uh well it was meant to be Monaghan, but now there's talks if the Circuit of Ireland could be because this year we weren't too pushed and going because of the road mileage and stuff every year. It's normally high enough high, hey, but I was looking this year and I think the longest road sections might be six miles, so that's more appealing to us. Um, so that and it's only an hour and a half from home as well. So that could be the circuit could be the next run out. I would say in the polo, anyways. Excellent, excellent. And Kyle, we know you're. You know this is all about building time. But you know for the BRC coming up now in two weeks' time, and like it's going to be epic. The lineup of stuff that's going to be there in that first round. Yeah, it's absolutely scary. I think. I think I was the first name to go down on the BRC. I thought to myself, okay. We've moved up. Uh, we acquired three entries. Obviously, we haven't, haven't won the Junior British Championship last year. So it just made sense. And obviously, uh, Carmichael Logistics has came on board. He's going to cover our transport this year. So, uh, yeah, it, mathematically, it just made sense to go do that. And I thought, uh, okay, I got third overall last year in the junior car. I think it's the first time that's ever happened. So I thought to myself, okay, I'll aim for the same target again. Go for third in the championship and then just about every man and his dog entered into it. You've got, uh, you know, you've got Chris Ingram, you've got uh, Keith from over home, you've got, oh, the, the names, it just goes on. It's absolutely incredible, the list now. So uh, you're uh, you're absolutely going to have to have the stars aligning and if you want to have any sort of a result there and having never been on a stage in an R5 car, it'll be a steep learning curve, but uh, obviously it's something me and Sean will be relishing and, uh, Going up against guys like that, you'll uh, yeah, you'll have to enjoy it at the very least. So you will. That was some crack. Them three boys. Uh, that's what rallying's all about to me. You know, having the fun, the bit of banter there too. You know, so thanks very much to the three boys. And then this is uh, next up. Then we have Seb Perez and Gary McLenny. That you know they've won the historic rally in Mallorca now four times in the last five years. You know what a record to have. Brilliant to see. You know, and the, the Stratus. <laughs> Oh, anyway, <laughs> before we go there, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I think we'll catch up with the two boys. Seb, Gary, uh, another great one at the weekend in uh, the historic rally in Mallorca. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, it was a nice little win back out in the Stratos. So uh, yeah, it was good actually. Yeah, a bit of rain as well, which helped our helped our case against the Porsches. But yeah, it was good fun. Yeah, and like you know, that's uh, four ones and five years now. Obviously, the COVID years that you weren't able to travel. So like, that's a lovely record to have there as well. Not a bad record, yeah. Yeah, well, the problem is we've got to keep it now. That's the <laughs> but, uh, Yeah, no, really nice. Um, it's a lovely event. The roads are fantastic. Some cracking long stages. We had a 23K stage on on to end the second day, which was really nice. So, yeah, no, the roads are really good. And, yeah, it's a good rally. Yeah, and Gary, like a 23-kilometre stage, like does that keep you busy? Or, you know, is it all kind of twists and corners and one thing or another a lot? And it, uh, that stage stage kind of changed halfway through. The first, let's say, the first half of it was really, really technical up a mountain called Sacalabra. It's quite a famous stage out here. Um, you know, it was really, really technical, and then it opened out onto the main road, and it was really fast for you know the next, let's say, eight or nine k. So, um, well, you're always busy out in New York. Call notes. It's really always twisty, twisty, twisty. As I say, this one was a new stage they added in the second half to Sacalabra this year. Um, 
But uh, so so you're always busy out here, calling notes. <laughs> and like you know, the level of competition every year is getting higher and higher out there as well now too. You know, there's some fantastic machinery appearing as well. I I think this rally's got more popular this last probably maybe three to four years. You know, um, there's a lot of Germans come here and and the heavy duty Porsches. Um, there's lots of Europeans, but Germans seem to like it here for some reason. Whether they've holiday homes here or whatever. Um, uh, that's our our main opposition. Always nearly comes from Germany. Chris Rosenberger is um, he's Austrian uh, and he's he's really quick out here. And um, but there's uh, a couple of Germans we have to battle with every year. Yeah, and like I said, the the, uh, the last time we spoke, the, you know, the the Stratas had you know had to go and get repairs after the RAC. So like to get it back so soon, like we know how you know delicate this car is. It wasn't just a matter of going and getting a few bits off the shelf to fix this car. This was a big job. Yeah, it was a massive job. I mean, literally after the RAC got the car back and we blasted it off and got the engine out of it straight away to get back down to Swindon and Swindon. And to be fair to them, they literally got it back. Um, I think it was like three days before the car was due to leave. We had uh, the morning of the car. The car was on the boat that night. We did a shakedown the more in the morning. Um, so yeah, if there was a problem, we wouldn't have been going. But to be fair, it, it ran sweet all weekend. Um, but yeah, the car needed quite a lot of work after the RAC. It was it was pretty hard on the poor thing. Um, but yeah, as well as the engine, obviously. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was tough going. Yeah, and the and tarmac tram, the car looks spectacular. You know, it, it was fantastic in the RAC. But to see it, you know, with the big front spoiler, the wide wheels, it just looks so mean. Yeah, it looks it looks a proper car in in tarmac trim. It's yeah. problem is on gravel. It's 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 sort of on the little skinny wheels, and it has to be super high. So it looks it looks a bit strange, but yeah, it looks a proper car on tarmac, and that's really what they were they were famous for for its for its success on tarmac. Uh, and what's it like them big wide wheels on you know good dry tarmac? Is it does it stick to the road or? It's it's good. It's got it's got a lot of grip. Um, it's. It, it probably handles better than a Porsche, but it just it hasn't quite got the grunt. It's, it's making the power now, but it just hasn't quite got the grunt is a problem. Like just just that that pull out the corner, it, it sort of misses that a bit. But um, but yeah, it's good fun. It was interesting in the wet with a two nine five <laughs> rear tire on it, as you can imagine. But yeah. um, it's a bit interesting in places. But no, no, it's a good car to drive. Yeah, and like, Gary, from your point of view, like I can imagine, like uh, you know, in the wet, that thing. You're going to be holding on tight a few times, pulling the belts a wee bit. On tight, wetter dry in that machine, but uh, <laughs> it was really tricky on day three of this event. Uh, it, of course, it never really rains when you're rallying in Mallorca, but this time it properly rained. Um, we had wet tires, thankfully, with us, um, and it was just when you when you get stand water, nothing works. But with big, big white wheels, it was just she was just skating all over the road. Really, really tricky. Um, but Mr. P can keep her on the road all right, thankfully. So uh, it was mm. good now. And like I said, do, does your racing help, you know, in the likes of Mallorca for it? Is the smooth with tar or is it a, a different technique? Uh, it definitely helps you with sort of lines and opening corners up and, and sections of it. But obviously, you don't know where you're going within reason. Obviously, people get it's open recce out there, which is quite good. So you, you get to have a few passes to the stages, but. Um, I think probably not like speak too big of myself, but I'm probably quite good at opening a road up in terms of the line better than most. So I can generally get the most out of the out of the car rather than a lot of I think a lot of people probably end up down the middle of the road, um, mm. lose a bit of time that way. But yeah, it's good. I think the I don't think the wet I think the wet in my racing has come from a rallying, really. I think the um that's yeah, that's just one of those things. Um yeah, you can, you can be a bit you have to deal with it in the moment. <laughs> Yeah, just hold on and, and hope for the best sometimes. But yeah, uh -huh. and like you know, you've had the opportunity to drive the Porsche in the last few weeks and the, the Stratus. You know mm. what? What's the car that you know? If you had to pick one tomorrow morning, would it be the Stratus still, or would it be the Porsche? Oh, that's tricky. Uh, <laughs> I think this. Well, the the hype around the Stratos is incredible, as um, as you well know, especially from the RAC. Um, there's a lot of Porsches out already. So to bring something different and to go and dust a load of Porsches in the Stratos, which you could maybe say is the underdog, was was really nice. The Porsche is still a great car. It's a really nice thing to drive. Lots of torque, very well balanced. You can really trust it and lean on it. You, 
you've got to be a bit more cautious with the Stratos, especially where it's bumpy. Fortunately, Mallorca, the roads are lovely and smooth, but anything bumpy, um, you've got to watch with the Stratos because when it goes, it it goes quick. Yeah, uh, there's there's no there's not the same kind of natural movement with it. It's either all on or all off, almost kind of thing. Yeah, you go from feeling really comfortable in the car for it trying to put you in a dry stone wall. So it just it, <laughs> it all happens really quickly in that. Whereas the Porsche sort of it's a little bit slower to react and it yeah, you can sort of deal with it a bit better. <laughs> and then the Stratus is going to be parked up this weekend and Rally North Wales and a different car again. Yeah, yeah. So we're out this weekend, Rally North Wales uh, in Little Porsche. Uh, it's quite an early car, 1970. So yeah, nice car actually. So looking forward to getting out in that uh, Rally North Wales. So yeah, did it last year. We had, um, I think we had a misfire in the end and we, we didn't finish, did we? Rocker, uh, I think. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Rocker, like Rocker. Two years ago, I think it was Rocker. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a shame. Um, yeah. So yeah, try and have a clean run on that. Yeah, Gary, that British Historic Championship has really developed into something very, very strong. Like, there's entries coming, you know, the like Porsche, the Mark II, and like it's right across the UK. Like, you know, there's a lot of guys travel over from Ireland here for it now as well, too. Yeah, that that's definitely growing that British Historic uh, series. I uh, know for Rally North Wales, you have Mark Higgins coming to do it, um, and the is a tier eight, tier seven. Um, so that's going to bring extra hype to this round. Gwyndaf Evans is also doing it, I think, in a Mark II. So that's going to bring more uh, excitement. But uh, each round of that championship always gets a good entry. Um, there's a couple of Irish boys, Owen McMack in there, uh, always comes over and does them. And um, uh, Man McDade um, and Declan Casey always come over. And they've mm-hmm. do, done it maybe twice that series now. But no, it's, it's, it's good. And it's good to see Irish over there because the forests, uh, forest over here they're mega like it they're really really good good rounds and good like th- this weekend we're doing uh, rally gb stages gerson yog and dovey and all that or dyphant whatever they call it um so it's it's good good stages and stages are just you know everybody sees on t- tv etc so it's cool to be doing them yeah and like say from your point of view is it like is then the kind of stages that you wake up now on sunday morning just itching at the bit to get the you know get the feel of gravel bouncing off the back of the car yeah, I think the the UK gravel roads are just fantastic, and then rally nuts in a couple of weeks as well, using using some more fantastic old GB stages. So, um, yeah, it's it's really nice to get out on some proper classic well stages. Um, but yeah, I think rallying in the UK is sort of, I hope I hope so, it's sort of coming back a bit with yeah. sort of British Historic Championship. BRC has got an incredible entry this year, which is really good to see. Um, live live coverage with ITV and that sort of thing as well. So hopefully it's 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 the return and obviously the RAC was incredible but um yeah so hopefully rallying in the UK is coming back yeah because like and I, I do believe that you know historic rallying has kind of set the president you know like the way they changed around their championship I think was probably an inspiration to the BRC as well too because they've kind of almost followed the same pattern you know they've took it and kind of come you know like make it more compact that you know and less rounds and you know give the competitors what they want and that seems to be the the, the BRC has went down as well yeah, I think so. And I think uh, they're starting to introduce some closed road rallies over here in the UK. I mean, they're not like what you guys have over in Ireland by any means, but um, it's a start. And yeah, I think it's probably going to lead towards that way with with the way sort of forestry is going. But if most sports and rallying in particular has got a really good following and stuff, then hopefully it'll help the case for rallying in the UK and in Welsh Forest. But um, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's nice to see some competitive rallying coming back and yeah yeah i'm looking forward to looking forward to this weekend and watching how everyone gets on on the brc as well yeah. the pace is great the pace is serious over mm. them for us uh, and them events really good like you've hard chargers like Adrian Hetherington over here and he's he's driving hard he's hard to beat like yeah. Yeah. but uh, the pace is really good and it's 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 good to see mm-hmm. and like you know the, 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 you know, the tr7 we've seen what it done in the rac and you know, Chris Ingram rung the neck off it. Like, it's going to be very interesting to see how Mark Higgins performs in it as well. Yeah, like Mark Higgins could drive anything fast. He could yeah. drive an over defender fast. Like, um, I'm very excited to see how, what way he's going to go on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if he gets a bit of testing, a bit of setup time in it. I think he'll be really quick. Yeah, he's mm. he's seated number twenty, but uh, I think I think he'll be one to watch now. He'll definitely be. Uh, we'll be checking his times, you know. That's for sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and like Gary, for for yourself, like you know, a huge time and commitment you're putting into all this as well too, and like it needs a strong team behind you at home to make sure all this happens for you as well. Well, Charlene's uh, uh, she's uh, she's happy to see me doing the uh, what we love to do. Um, we love rallying. We always did. So now, if her play to her now, she she lets me get away and and. Uh, get on these adventures with Seb and fair play to Seb for asking me to come on board a, few, a good few years ago now and we're, we're still here and uh, we have to mention Steve that I keep saying in my Facebook post makes all this happen he's the boy that wants us to go and, and he, he's just more keen nearly to go around than me and Seb sometimes he's pushing us why don't you just do a few more and he's keeping us going too so uh, we have definitely have to thank uh, thank everybody at home yeah yeah, and Steve, like you know, as Gary just said there, like your dad is your biggest supporter, and like he had a you know a fantastic run there as well. For a man that has cut back on his rallying, not out as much, you know, take a strong finish there in New York at the weekend as well. Yeah, he's not doing as much now. He's sort of just decided to just do the events he really enjoys, and he's been lucky enough to do a lot of rallying. So he's just gone right. I'm just going to do the ones I enjoy. And yeah, yeah, they're really good running Mallorca. I think the I think the wet, wet weather helped being in the little escort. The poor thing got his neck wrung for three <laughs> days, but uh, yeah, no, he had a really nice result fifth overall um, against some big heavy Porsches. So yeah, I think he was he was pretty happy with that. So yeah, I don't I don't know what he's thinking he's doing next, but he'll uh, he'll find something cool to go and go and have a play. Yeah, because he, he has a few toys to play with. <laughs> yeah, he's got a few, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah. might get the Stratus out at some point, or will you, will you, will you lend him his own car back again now at this stage? Maybe. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. That, that's for negotiation. That My, my name's on the door now, so uh, we'll see. But no, I think I think, I think he'd like to go out again in it, um, to be fair. I think he'd be on tarmac, but yeah, he'd like to he'd like to have another run in it now, I think. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. He's definitely fell in love with it again. I mean, he said yeah. one time he lost his love yeah. for it after the incident but uh he's definitely uh the social media buzz around it as we talked about is is absolutely crazy yeah so i think he enjoys all that buzz and enjoys the hype and you know of course it's one of his brands too that's that's getting all the advertising with amigos and stuff so he's mm -hmm. he enjoys all that and it, it all works like yeah and of course the, the gary uh Bickle honey media special that has shots you know with the yachts in the background and all that there too, just add to the story. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gary knows how to push it. Yeah, yeah, media, media, <laughs> marketing <laughs> expert over here. Yachting expert, I know. Listen, whenever you're, uh, well, people say whenever you're older, you can look back. Well, I'm getting older, so it's, uh, <laughs> uh, so people will be looking back on all these uh, adventures and these cool photographs and stuff and saying, do you know what, that was mega. So thanks there to Seb and Gary. And I think that rally in North Wales at the weekend is going to be a cracker, Connor. Yeah, it's looking quite good. Um, what do you call it now? Obviously, weather conditions are going to be interesting. Yeah. But uh, what do you call it? Yeah, there's a very strong entry. And I suppose the bit of excitement there was Mark Higgins in a TR7. That's for sure. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how Mark gets on, you know. So, And then, you know, quite a lot of local interest over there as well, too. Adrian Hallington, Michael McDade, Gary, obviously, and Owen McMacken. Um, David Crossan, just to name but a few there, you know, too. So, yeah, um, you talk about weather conditions. Um, not great weather conditions forecast for West Cork this weekend either. <laughs> no, certainly isn't. Like, it's getting its fill of rain at the minute. And, uh, yeah, who knows if it's going to ease up in time or not. Mm -hmm, that's for sure. And I've seen even somebody posted, uh, Dizzy Wilson posted uh, a photo from Costa Brava, the wreck he's on today for it, and there of snow. <laughs> so... <laughs> You think maybe if you're going to cost a bravo, you're, you're guaranteed good weather, but it's not looking good out there as well later. But yeah, West Cork this weekend, Um, you know, what can we say about West Cork? It hasn't been said before, you know, a hundred and, yeah, well, I think they're, they're, they're just tipping maybe 169, 170 at the moment. But like epic rally every year seems to be getting better and better. The night stage is going to be another new novelty there too as well. I just think, I just think this is going to be a fantastic rally. Absolutely. Like starting on a Friday, four stages, and as you say, two of them in the dark, like it really is a tough test. And if we're going to throw the weather into that as well, like that's a tough ask, you know, mm -hmm. straight into the thick of it. Um, fast stages in the dark and it lashing rain. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. So we're going to hear, we're here a wee bit about that. Um, first of all, we'll catch up with Sinead Canny. Sinead is travelling over from Singapore to do the event. Um, she's going to be sitting with her brother in a, a Fiesta Rally 2. Uh, so we speak about uh, West Cork and what's the appeal coming over for West Cork. And we also speak then about the woman in motorsport uh, uh, 
forum that was on there last weekend as well too, which looked an absolutely fantastic event. You know, good crowd of people at it and seemed to be really good interesting uh, topics up for discussion as well, Connor. Yeah, look, they, they covered a lot and it was great to see, you know, obviously tied it in with International Women's Day, etc. But, you know, more we need more of this. And, and again, the more women we can encourage to get into the sport and take part in the sport, uh, you know, from our competitors that were over in Saudi Arabia to our competitors at home on the Targa events or the night navigations or right through to, you know, the stage rally. And like, it's fantastic to see. That's for sure. That's for sure. So anyway, let's hear from Sinead. So Sinead, we're a few days out now from West Cork. You've made the trip from Singapore to compete in West Cork, an event you've done numerous times now at this stage. Yeah, Kevin, um, I'm delighted to be here to, to chat to you. But yes, I've made uh, the journey a few times now. Um, I was previously living in London before making the move to Singapore. So I complicated my travel a little bit more by going out to um, Asia. I think West Cork offers just an amazing weekend. It is over St. Patrick's weekend, so the crack is there for sure. But for me, the, the road mileage, um, the stages, it's one of the more practical events if you're going to travel from a long distance point of view, but also at the same time, the club is amazing. Steve just does such an amazing job. Um, they have incentives for people who travel from overseas. Um, to come, we get, you know, extra uh, vouchers from around town. Um, so everything is in place to encourage people to travel from overseas. Uh, and then just to complicate things even further, my brother, who I sit with, travels from, from Boston. So, um, yeah, just, just to add a few extra mileage. And this year, um, my younger brother is also traveling from New York to compete in the event. So, yeah, there's uh, three cannies showing up in West Cork, uh, much to the COC's delight this year. Yeah, and uh, there's much as it's a family re reunion, bit of sound of it as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we, we don't see each other too often, but it tends to be centered around a rally or maybe Christmas. But yeah, it is a, definitely a time where we can get together and we all have something to talk about. And also, you know, my brother brings his, his wife's actually from Cork, so she comes to and their daughter. So we get to meet up with their family. So you're absolutely right. It's, it's more than just the rally. It's a family occasion as well. But obviously, you know, the rally is family as well. So, yeah, it's a fantastic time to come back. Yeah, and, and previously you sat with your father in West Cork as well too. So, you know, uh, this, like, uh, you, you know, as the saying goes, you didn't like this off the step. The like, rallying's in mm -hmm. the blood. Yeah, um, I actually was was really honoured to write an article uh, for the programme last year. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it due to work commitments. But um, I think he had competed like 35 years ago in the West Cork Rally. And he comp competed a few times. And little did we know that 2014, the two of us would sit in beside each other and finish the rally and get the coveted mug at the end of the weekend. So, yeah, no, you're right. It's in the blood. And, and as anyone who's watching tonight knows... If it's in the blood, unfortunately, it's there to stay and it's very hard to get rid of it. So, yeah, it's, it's I'm really, really lucky to have that sort of um, that family background and obviously continuing, continue, continuing it um, with my brothers as well. Yeah. And like the car of choice this weekend, Ryan Locker and Fiesta, a rally two car. And, like you know, what a weapon to be, you know, sitting into on Friday night. Oh, I'm, like, I just can't even imagine what it's going to be like, especially with the night stages. But. We did, uh, we, we hired with Ryan two years ago, so we've had an absolute taste of, of how he operates. Such a brilliant setup um, and like dealing with Ryan is amazing, but you know, his cars are just unbelievable as well. So, I mean, from a mechanical point of view, I'll sit in and, you know, I've often been asked to look after a couple of buttons, but as far as I'm concerned, the driver looks after all the mechanical side and, you know, I've got a big enough job with two, two, uh, books of pace notes this year uh, much to my delight so yeah I'm really looking forward to it and um, look the speed on the on the starting line on on stage one I think just gives you goosebumps and once you take off you just know this is why you're here and this is why you're going to come back year after year again I, and, the, and the night stages is a new challenge this year too and that you know that adds another dimension to it and something else to, to look forward to as well yeah we did one night stage about three years ago I'm not 100% sure I think it was three years ago and I remember finishing the end of the stage and they had given us a little pack with a high vis in it and then they were you were giving it back to them and the last thing I said giving back the pack is can I do that again it was just 
you know, it was amazing. And I remember going past the Four Olds bar and even getting photographs of it afterwards. Um, it's just special. It makes things just a little bit more exciting. Um, and I'm sure for the spectators as well, it's something really, really um, exciting for them to come out and see the cars at night. But it'll be challenging. We'll have two two stages in, in daylight and then we'll come back in and go out and do the two night stages. So, um, you know, fingers crossed all crews will get back and uh, be ready to to go again on Saturday morning. Yeah, for sure. And, like you know, we talk about, you know, like Ring and, you know, all the names that you can think of associated with West Cork and they're all there in spades now come the weekend as well. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think Ring does stand out. And I think for me, why it stands out the most is, you know, when you're queuing up, it doesn't matter if you're car number one or car number 176, as there will be this weekend. Um, it's watching people sitting on the wall, waving at you, you know, the kids just coming up to you while you're waiting there and, and like waving in the window. And it's definitely special. And also the road mileage is so short. Um, it's just great to just come out of service and and you're down and you're ready to go. So yeah, Ring for me is is absolutely special. It's it's synonymous with West Cork. And um, like I said, you just feel like a bit of a celebrity when you're pulling up along along the front before you take off. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, that stage. I think it's Saturday afternoon as far as, as, far as I know. Yeah. And like, you know, as well then at the weekend just past Motorsport Ireland uh, hosted a woman in motorsport like uh, conference and like, what an event it seemed to be, like uh, just seeing some of the stuff online. It, it, it looked to be a fantastic weekend. It was. Um, so I sit on the Motorsport Ireland Women in Motorsport Commission with an incredible bunch of individuals. Um, there's about 12 of us in total and our chairperson is Rosemary Walsh. Um, she just leads a, a fantastic commission. Um, the commission's there really just to represent females in motorsport, be that on a volunteer or competitor side, um, to, to give them a voice to make sure that, you know, we're doing what we can um, to promote equality, whether that be on the competitor side or on the volunteer side. So, yeah, we all gathered at the Midland Park Hotel on Saturday at 4.30. Uh, we had about 95 attendees. Um, and I think we set out to make sure that we represented multi-disciplines on the day. So we had everything from sporting trial to karting um, to, I was going to say mud plugging, which is sporting trial, um, to rallying. And then also we not only had um, the competitor side of things, we also had a volunteer side. We had a speaker from Sport Ireland. Um, it was amazing to have Aidan Harper speak. Um, and we also had a panel, um, Stars of the Future panel, um, you know, girls as young as 12 up to, to 16, 17, speaking about their passion for the sport. And what was really um, amazing was when they were asked who their heroes were, um, you know, bearing in mind these kids are you know pretty young and, and they mentioned like Rosemary Smith. Um, and also Michelle Mouton. So they're not after, you know, the younger, trendier drivers. It's yeah. it's the people that have, you know, stood on the world stage and made that massive difference. So, you know, one of them remarked that they'd read her book and they just want to be like her. So hugely inspirational. And, you know, I cannot thank everybody who traveled um, from near and far. We even had um, some competitors or sorry, some attendees who had actually signed on 70 um, crews during the day for West Cork, drove to Port Leash and drove home again. So I just want to say a massive shout out to those guys because I know, you know, he heading to an event the weekend before the West Cork rally is, is a massive ask. And um, yeah, they were there. So yeah, it was a brilliant event. And, and again, thanks to everybody who attended. Yeah. And like, you know, we should just, you know, before we go any further, like Rosemary Smith, like what, you know, what a trailblazer she was. Like she set the standard, like, that we are still aspiring to like how many years later she you know the, she the, there was no glass ceiling as far as rosemary smith no. was concerned she she wanted to go out and compete no matter who she was competing against or where she was competing she wanted to take on everybody in one i mean like i said to hear a 14 or a 15 year old say that she was their idol just shows you the impact that she had on you know the lives of females in motorsport and she did it against all the odds and i think like it just shows you that she will inspire for future generations her book is amazing and you know she gave her time right up until the end to attend events 
I believe she was the oldest uh, lady to ever drive an F1 car. I mean, there was nothing that she didn't do and nothing that would stop her, even like I said, up until the very end. And, you know, we we remembered her on the evening along with um, Sarah Purcell as well, you know, two incredibly important and influential females um, in, in the Motorsport Ireland, um, you know, industry. So, you know, again, Rosemary will continue to inspire, you know, for forever, frankly. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's she was one of my idols. And in fact, I used to like dress up as Rosemary Smith when I was a child. Well, I suppose my mom dressed me up as her. But you just think about the generations from that age right up until now. She's still number one in people's minds. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's another woman you mentioned, Sarah Purcell, too. And all her inspiring, you know, uh, driver, just full stop. You know, what she went through in her last year, like to go out and compete and what she was going through, like it just as an inspiring. Yeah, I mean, no words can describe, you know, how inspirational um, Sarah was and, and she will continue again to inspire, you know, females, competitors, volunteers and, and future generations. So yeah. absolutely for sure. Yeah. And like, you know, as you say, like this event at the weekend, like we tend to kind of put the blinkers on and just look, oh, rally, rally, rally. It, yeah. There's so much that the motorsport Ireland takes in the racing, the karting, you know, as you say, the the, the sporting trials, that you know, all them things, and females are involved right from the, the you know the grassroots level right up to the to, to the very top. Yeah, I mean, what was amazing from from the uh, event that we did on Saturday, it opened up everyone's eyes to the multidisciplines that are out there. Certainly for me as well, I had known a bit about sporting trials, mud plugging, um, but I hadn't really understood it. And it's accessible. You can actually start it from 10 years of age. You And also you can actually sit in the car with the competitor. It's called, a, you're called a bouncer. These are the things I found out <laughs> and learn that way. And, you know, there was incredible girls who spoke on a panel. Um, and also what was interesting was the COC from the event on Saturday um, actually started off her motorsport kind of career in rallying and co-driving. And here she was, the COC um uh, of a sporting trial so you know when when you join a club um check and see what disciplines they have um and make sure you know if you join a club most disciplines are accessible some are more expensive than others but either on the competitor side you can look at something like mud plugging or karting or the autocross um or you know the auto test and the night navs and then obviously on the volunteer side it's just a blanket of opportunities as we know um i know there'll be a lot of marshals heading down to west court this weekend um but you know volunteering um is just the best way to get involved and i think now with the um, motorsport ireland have launched uh, the young marshalling program which means now not only is volunteering um, accessible for obviously over 18s, it will become accessible for younger age groups as well, which is phenomenal. And I think it will drive um, more involvement in the sport and obviously more interest in the sport and that keep that those generations coming up through the ranks. Yeah, because we, we did the younger blood coming through, you know, we're so used to going to events here and we see the same faces, you know, every event, no matter whether you're north, south, east or west we need fresh faces and we need new people coming 100 percent. and i mean obviously at the end of the day you know there are there are certain elements of finances that can restrict competing um but like as i mentioned there are also other disciplines that you can get involved in that aren't um that don't involve high investment but obviously at the end of the day volunteering everyone talks about the rally family you go to one rally uh, you get hooked you meet people um, we all know how friendly, um, you know, the motorsport community is, um, whatever discipline you go to. And I think the overriding message from the weekend, from every single panel and every single panelist was call your local club, ask, reach out to anybody on Facebook who was at the event, reach out to Motorsport Ireland. Um, all the panelists spoke about come talk to me, you know, really welcoming. And that's how people ultimately just get involved is picking up the phone, dropping an email, dropping a text message to somebody. And and, and it goes from there. And then you find that your weekends are taken up by um, Motorsport Ireland and, and lots of um, motorsport activity, which I think at the end of the day, everyone knows it's slightly addictive and um, just so rewarding. Yeah. And the, the, the great thing with all forms of motorsport, it doesn't matter whether you're male, female, you know, 18, 80, 12, there's something there for you to get involved in. 
Absolutely. And actually, what was really lovely to see on Saturday at the event as well was some of our panelists hadn't come from a motorsport background. Um, interestingly, we had Ruth Ann O'Connor uh, join one of our competitor panels and she she didn't come from any background. And she described how she got involved where John needed a navigator one weekend. And she's like, yeah, I'll give it a go and had no experience. And she said, by the end of that weekend, she just decided this seat is mine and no one else is getting it. So, like I said, there's, there's people who don't come from motorsport um, and simply just fall into it or, you know, whether they meet somebody or or see it on television. So I don't I think the message is just because you haven't come from it is more of a reason to reach out to us because, you know, you clearly want to get involved and, and the door is open for anyone to get involved. Yeah. And for yourself personally, it's nice to be able to give a voice to you know those people that are out there standing on the ditches or those people involved, you know, co-driving or whatever. It's, you know, sometimes their voice is not heard, so it's nice to be able to, to speak out and let everybody know just how magnificent of a sport we're, we have here. Yeah, I mean, I was in absolute awe when I said it at the event on Saturday. Like, the people in the room, the experience, the number of years they have given to volunteering and compete. Like, I couldn't even touch the surface on it. And I suppose what I just try and do is, you know, try and help these people know that there is, um, you know, opportunities for them to progress. They might be doing a basic role in the club. We've seen our female COCs. We've seen full teams of females lead events. We've seen, you know, scrutineers coming up through the ranks. And I think it's just making sure we're talking about it and we're putting that information out there that there is no barrier. And I think the one thing that was really evident on Saturday was we had a great contingency of, of men in the room who absolutely are amazing supporting so to support uh, females coming up through the ranks to, you know, make sure there are future uh, females doing the head jobs. And I think that's the one thing that is evident about motorsport in Ireland is that there are great, great um, male role models and male, male mentors really pushing through the next generation and, and, and the females um, to get to those roles that they're naturally talented at doing, whether it be on the competitor side or on the volunteer side. So it was a big message to say thank you to them and please continue to help us do that because, you know, without them, you know, a lot of us wouldn't be where we are today. That's for sure. And then I suppose finally, just to reiterate re what you said earlier, was get involved, you know, call your local motor club, go on to the Motorsport Ireland website, whatever, you know, text the competitors, speak to people in the service area. Everybody yeah. is there and wants to help. Yeah, and also there's a full list of events and um, sometimes maybe so certain disciplines get more um, promotion than others. But on the Motorsport Ireland website, they have a full list of events and I can guarantee you there is something on every weekend because when, when we went to book in our event, um, we clashed with everything. There was no, like we had a, there was a night nav in Monaghan on Saturday and during at night and there was the sport and trial on during the day. So there is no weekend, I, I think, without an event. So therefore, there's always, always, always something going on in your area. So yeah, they've got the fullest of events there. So I suggest just turn up at it and I guarantee you, you'll get hooked. And next thing you know, you'll be working your way up the ranks as well. Lovely to hear from Sinead there and about, you know, uh, uh, not just what herself and Michael are going to be up to in West Cork, but also just the forum as well and what's happening in the background there with regard to, you know, encouraging and supporting women in motorsport. Um. Kevin, I also got the chance to catch up with Mikey Galvin uh, to chat about, obviously, West Cork coming up, second round of the ITRC, but also the recent announcement that himself and Keith were going to be undertaking the British Rally Championship this year as well. Mikey, thanks for joining us. You have a busy couple of weeks coming up. West Cork rallies just around the corner and then you're straight into the Northwest stages as first round of the BRC. Yeah, Connor, it's it's um it's extremely busy actually. It's uh it's more busy than I had planned on being this year. Uh it's busier than an ordinary guy like me should be anyway, uh with rallying. But no, looking forward to it. Like um there's there's an awful lot to get to get through this month, but uh it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. Yeah. And and you're saying you're busier than you planned. The the, the BRC wasn't really on the cards this year, was no. it? No. No, not not at all, not at all. Actually, it all it all kind of started happening just around Galway time, literally in the middle of Galway time. Um, so Ireland was was well enough, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of work to do in in Ireland alone. And then when the BRC thing came up, look, it's an opportunity that you can't that you can't turn away. They don't come around all the time, um, and you know, as they always say, rallying won't 
always be there for everyone. So, you know, you have to take it, take it uh, when it's there and when the opportunity is there. So look, um, as much as we give out and say, oh, you know, we have all this rallying to do, you know, it's a blessing too. And it's, it's an amazing um, opportunity to have. And, you know, you, with the BRC, it's a it's it's a hunt for the fifth title, and it, that's been an ambition of Keith and yourselves for a while now. Yeah, um, we were close. We were close a couple of years ago. Uh, we led it for a little bit, and Oshin and Noel Noel took it in the finish. That was a great year. Uh, but yeah, we've been going back uh, since, since I won it in seventeen with Keith, and that was his fourth, and that was the last time. That was the last time we won it, but. Uh, we started back in 18, uh, I think we went back in 21, did it in 22, we were second, we did a little bit last year, didn't go so far. So yeah, years are shoving on. Uh, you're kind of saying, oh my God, is that, you know, that long ago since since we won it in 17, we've actually gone back there quite a few times, which we love, you know, we love going back there. Um, but I think this is a good year to go back and have another another crack at it. I mentioned it's a good year. Like from the point of view of the BRC, it's been revitalized. They've done a bit of revamping. Yep. It's got a whole new PR media package, and it's also attracted quite a strong entry. Probably one of the strongest we've seen in in you know half a dozen years. Yeah. No, like as I said before, I I actually love love going going to the UK to rally. There's something cool about it. Um, it's just a slightly different different thing to hear. You know, you just get to go to lovely places that you wouldn't always get to be. Um, but the rallying there is good. The mixture of surfaces is good. Um. You know, Keith goes well in gravel and, and, and tarmac. I think, you know, he loves loves tarmac, but I'm not sure which one he actually prefers more. He likes the both of them uh, quite equally. Um, but yeah, we go to West Cork this week. Um, obviously Galway went well and in a brand new car and a whole new package, and uh, it was a flawless event, and we really enjoyed it. Um, so now we have West Cork coming up, which is a big, big event, uh, three day event. It's almost like a Donegal. Um, everyone always talks about Donegal being the big event in Ireland, but which it, which it is for sure. But West Cork is is almost that um, this weekend. So uh, we made some notes this weekend, and uh, there's a lot, a lot of work, a lot of a lot of high high speed, um, which suits. But it's uh, God, I, f- I had forgotten how how fast West Cork was. Again, it's been. Uh, 2016 since I was there last and geez, you know you see some of the roads you're like god almighty the speed here is going to be incredible uh, but looking forward to it yeah and um, what condition are the stages in because we saw Galway was fairly tricky you know wet and greasy and that and there's been a lot of rain since Galway so you know West Cork yeah. hasn't escaped that so what shape are the stages in Overall, overall, they're quite good. There's a couple of places where I'd say there was a few farmers out spreading some slurry. Um, so there's a couple of small sections when you when you look at it in the whole picture, small sections where there's a lot, a lot of mud compressed onto it was dry the weekend, so compressed onto a dry tarmac. Um uh maybe it'll wash off if a bit of rain comes, which it already has uh this evening down here. Um it might wash off. It's kind of hard to tell, but overall it's very, very good. Um I'd say there could be as I said, it was dry, but you can see where where shiny tar is going to be shiny in the in the wet. Um, there's some very very abrasive stuff, but there's some stuff I'd say if if it was if there was a bit of moisture on there, could be a different story, which makes it tricky because it's awfully awfully high speed. But it's um, yeah, it's a rally of its own. It's it's uh, something special. It's kind of a choppy tarmac with extremely high speed and and uh, gradients as well. Um, I haven't seen uh, many stages like in West Cork where you have very, very steep downhill sections of very, very fast roads. It's incredible, yeah. And you mentioned it kicks off on the Friday with four stages. Two of those are in the dark. So, you mm-hmm. know, a bit of a novelty for Irish Rally. We don't get too many nighttime stages. What's what's the view? Is there any extra preparation? Do you put extra detail into the notes or anything for those? Uh, not so much. You just have to make sure your map light is working. <laughs> There's something as simple as that, you know, you know, having having the, the map light working because you might very rarely use it. And then uh, when it gets dark, all of a sudden, you know, there's so much to be doing and uh, uh, you have to have that prepped. You know, we'll say for me anyway, uh, but it usually goes well enough in the dark. Uh, we would do quite a bit of it in the UK. So it's it's nothing too strange for us at the moment, which is good. Um but the lights are so good on the cars now and stuff, you know, from what it was, I'd say 20, 30 years ago. Now the lights, I will say on the top cars, I, I'll only speak for the lights are just incredible. Uh, once they keep working. 
Yeah, well, that that that's it exactly, and and also you mentioned you know jokingly there about the map light, but the car is new to you. You only just got to jump into it literally just before Galway, so you're still familiarising yourself with a Fiesta. Yeah, at Galway, literally Saturday morning was <laughs> the first time I set into that car in Galway, um, and there's a few hiccups along the way there, but we got it sorted. But but uh, the map light, why why I say that is I remember a few years ago, I think it was the Isle of Man, uh, we started the stage in the bright, and it. It was getting dark in the middle of the stage, and we just turned off, uh, turned off of a main road into into a place under trees, and I, I didn't have my map light on. And when we turned that square left, everything just went dark, and it was that you know three seconds of absolute panic when you can't see, but got it sorted. But I never forgot, have your map light in order and ready to go, <laughs> even if it's bright, turn it on, people. <laughs> And you mentioned, obviously mentioned conditions, the stages and the speed of them, etc. as well. But, you know, we, we have that increased level of competition again for the ITRC this year. You know, we've got Josh and Callum, our regulars, but we've also got Matt. And for West Cork, you've got William Crichton as well. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It'll be it'll be great to see uh, William going now and stuff. Um, but I suppose after after coming out of Galway, there's there's a bit of expectation um on us which is which is fine you know it's a natural thing uh Galway was an extremely different different kind of event um but there's no doubt you know it uh, should be okay we should have a good enough run but it, you know, it's a long rally so there's no need to jump jump in in too quickly and make 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 a silly mistake because as we said earlier it's a very very long event but um it's a very different event, you know, if it's dry, if it's, it's it's just a completely different terrain. Other people could excel here. Um, you know, we might necessarily do do what happened in Galway at all. Uh, we might, we might not. So who knows? And when you have that expectation, does it add a little bit of extra pressure or a little bit of tension to, to come in, you know, to the start ramp of an event? I suppose it it does naturally. Yeah, because because going to Galway, there was no expectation really. Um, you know, I suppose that Keith always always has a little bit of it himself, you know. But but in general, it was it was a new car. We'd been away for you know give or take a year. Um, so there was there wasn't much expected. You know, the regulars were coming back from the year before and 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 all that. But now 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 uh, coming forward five weeks and and how how Galway went, there is that kind of a thing as oh you know, you should be fast and you should be this and you should be that which which does but you have to kind of you kind of have to blank that out a small bit because if you let that in too much it's it's probably not a great thing and you know again looking ahead to the the first round of the brc that's also an asphalt so and you have a week in between so that must be great to literally go from back to back events on tarmac again as both of you are getting settled into that car mm -hmm. well that was one of the one of the uh the things for, for doing the BRC as well was that you know all going well you were going to be fresh going 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 forward through you know through the year you were going to be match fit uh, and more so you know as the events went on so look we said as the opportunity came we might as well do it but it's going to be busy you know you know when you're using a car to do multiple events like that the car has to make it home which is you know the obvious thing um but we finish in West Cork on Sunday and we fly to London on Thursday so it's kind of hectic and then we had the circuit of ireland the weekend after that so so there's a whole whole chain reaction of things that has to go has to go okay the car being one of them um so if the car's in one piece it'll make life an awful lot easier in the next three weeks easier and, said than done though oh no absolutely but with that in mind is there an element where you might just back off a little bit and, and go for points rather than prizes uh i guess there there is yeah that's that that uh, sounds like a great idea <laughs> um yeah well you see it'll all depend on how how we'd we'll say the first day goes um you know it is a local enough event for keith uh he's gone there he's gone very well there before uh we took a second there in 16 uh we were the first our five car home in 16 so so we can go well there so we know that you know there's some some amount of speed there that 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 we could we could use um but things have moved on an awful lot since then uh, but we'll see, you know, we'll see after Friday night, see how things are looking. If you know, it's in a good place, yeah, you're going to push on and try and hold on to it. If the guys are going to um, be in a different place than they were in Galway and we're going to be on the back foot, well, then then you have an opportunity to take points. Um, having the first win of the year is, is always a nice thing. It always creates a kind of a cushion for you, doesn't it? But uh, 
I'm sure we won't be hanging around uh, too long. <laughs> and Mikey, last time we spoke, uh, what do you call it? it? Was after Galway, and you mentioned about you know the speed of the cars, and the cars literally are on the edge. And since then, we've seen a message from MI involving Josh and Callum and some of the other crews talking about you know spectator safety basically mm. so i just wanted to you know you've said how fast the the west cork stages look i was just wanted to get your view on on that yeah look to any anyone who's going to be spectating the rally this weekend that's listening to this just just be just be careful out there we don't want to lose any more stages um uh the stages are extremely extremely fast so you know there's only one answer if if, if a car is to leave the road it's it's quite dangerous, so just be careful. Uh, listen to the marshals and don't don't stand anywhere anywhere silly. Anyone out there should have a fair idea of what's what's what. So just just be careful and enjoy it. And you know, you mentioned there about losing the stage, and and you know, we know that the option for MI there is if if they're not happy where people are standing, they'll cancel the stage. And mm -hmm. I suppose you'll probably see that coming into play more because they need to prove a point. But from your point of view looking for as many points as possible for the championship you can't afford to to lose a no. stake for that reason no no we can't um it can work in some people's favor and it can also work work against them if you were to lose a stage or more um you know there's enough stages lost due to blockages and everything else uh, so let's you know try and not lose them because because people aren't going to listen to the marshals out there um you know i get i've been there uh, watching rallies you want to watch it and you know, a really good place and whatever, but you can do that without being without being completely silly. Uh, um, so let's keep them, let's keep them all all going the weekend and uh, keep everyone safe. Huge thanks to Mikey for his time. I know he's absolutely up to his eyes getting prepped for for West Cork. So really appreciate taking the time to chat to us. And look, you know, we got on to an important message there around spectator safety. We saw in Galway there were a few issues. We just can't afford to risk having a problem on the stages. That's for sure. That's for sure. And like it was Neil Burns, you know, I spoke there off air from the recording, and he mentioned, you know, he was at Marshland in Mayo, and he says, like, you know, spectators were coming onto the stage, so never they thought the stage was cancelled because you know there's some drivers coming through with the helmets off and all. But you have to remember that that you know the marshals and the officials have twelve minutes to get the stage live again. You, you know, there may be a few cars go through in convoy. You know, if they get held up at the scene of an accident, then. But another car could be coming down the stage live in a very short time. So I think that's just another very important message there to put out there. So if you're in West Cork or at any rally this year, just always listen to what, you know, the marshals and the officials are telling you to do. That's vitally important, you know, you know, so all for our own good, you know, for the good of everybody competing and, you know, spectating or whatever, just listen to what you've been told. So anyway, I think we'll hear now from uh, Kevin O'Driscoll. Who is the press officer for the West Court Rally and Kevin will tell us all the details about the event this weekend. Kevin, West Court can up now to three days. Action kicks off Friday evening. Uh, nice to see a bit of variety in the, the rally this year. Yeah, it's something different. We'll see how it works out. I mean, the club have had experience of any nice stage before once. That was a single stage, obviously, on that evening. But yeah, this is a little bit different now on an extra day and you know, it's an interesting concept. You know, I was even surprised myself when I heard that it came about or was coming about, but it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Um, I mean, the rally is still very well supported, as you can see by numbers. Um, I mean, I think Donna Kelly said to me there recently in the chat, but you were saying that <clears throat> night stages are the way to go in lots of ways because a lot of these younger lads that are going to Europe are racing night time anyway, you know, and I suppose it's the novelty of night stages. The local drivers is a big local entry this year, so I think the novelty of doing a night stage there too is, is, is a big thing, you know, so it's hopefully it'll all work out okay now, but it's it's nice to have that bit of variety and something, something a bit different about it, you know. Yeah, because, you know, there is something pretty special about, you know, lights and the noise and, you know, it's a more visual, you know, it really attacks the yeah. senses. <clears throat> it does. I mean, it, it, it was crap for the Ulster Valley last year, but it was pretty much a night stage by the time the last cars came around yeah. and it was horrendous weather. But still at the same time, it was still interesting because, you know, you were just seeing guys you know, going fast, they were dared to go, I suppose. But, but yeah, it was the noise, the noise and the lights and everything else. And it's, just, it's just fantastic. Like, it's just, it should be a good spectacle now, hopefully all going well. Yeah, and you know, you talked about numbers there. Like, 
record numbers this year. Like the West Cork hasn't seen an interview like this, and uh, was it nineteen eighty something? I think. Uh, uh, yeah, them? they would have. Uh, yeah, I think back in the early eighties they would have um, started somewhere between one fifty and one seventy. A lot of years, I'm not sure what the legal limit was at the time, but you know, it was. <laughs> it would have been one of the highest uh, supporter values at the time. Um, like. There's what one seven two or one seven three currently now with the Nova's arms anymore, but at the same time it's still very high. Like I mean, look, if it starts one sixty, it's still a good. It's a good. It's a good weekend's work for the club and for everyone involved. And you know, I think it's that's it shows that you know even now and things maybe maybe not. You know that you can see that numbers of entries are dropping slightly compared to last year and the year before. But at the same time, there's still you know, there's still a good strong healthy entry there. And um, yeah, it's it'll be interesting to to, to see how, how it goes. I think like I said, we're on one seven two or one seven one at the moment, and you know probably lose one or two more plus before maybe maybe two more before the weekend. But yeah, it would have been. I think we started one five nine last year, one sixty the year before. Similar numbers to Donegal. So mm-hmm. I think if you're starting on one sixty again, plus the historics and juniors, you know, still still doing okay. You know, that's for sure. Right. Think I between the historics and the juniors, there's another <clears throat> forty yeah. odd there too as well. Too there's about so. thirty. Yeah, there's thirty six. But yeah, twenty four historics, twelve juniors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. still going. Yeah, so, yeah. so um, be good. Yeah, and like you know, you talked. You know, not just uh, uh, quantity. The quality of the the entry list is very good again this year. Like the top ten is, you know, it's everybody there you'd want. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, Josh will be going for. You know, he's won a duel twice. He's looking to go for a hat trick and. You know, a couple of drivers have won the valley three times before, but only Donna has ever managed to do it three times consecutively. Josh had that chance this year. Obviously, the issue was Mayo could be, you know, could show a spell the works a new car. It'll be a bit, probably a little bit more difficult, but he's got a lot of experience in the event. He's done nearly every West Cork rally, I think, since 20, 20, 2014, I think, or 2015. So he's not, he's probably one of the most experienced of the top 10 in doing West, in West Cork. I mean, Callum, Callum's had, you know, mixed enough fortunes in West Cork over time, led one year, but not really been at the races the last two years as much. Um, or not last year, and, and you know, so two years ago he was unlucky actually, he was leading, then Josh caught him and did the gearbox failed. Uh, Keith has only ever done West Cork four times, you know, surprisingly for a West Cork man, so, mm-hmm. you know, now he was second one year, uh, Matt Edwards was there in 2019, so, again, would have a slight bit of experience with it, like William Crichton to be honest, is probably the most recent experience of anyone, and that's what makes it really interesting, because along with Josh, you know, and Callum, he's been there every year with the last four or five years, and you know, has been increasingly impressive, and every time he's been out uh, in the Valley Tree car, so now he's in Something a bit more potent, you know, it could be very interesting. I mean, maybe cost possibly could do with tempering it a little bit at the first stage or two, but because he did cost himself a bit of time last year on it. But I think he's more than capable of getting a very strong result, or you know, even in that company. I think, you know, because like um, you know, his times he was put in the rally three here, or like in the last couple of years, have been exceptional. Like, so you know, if the if the transition to the rally two car is uh, you know, is smooth. There's no doubt, but you know, especially by hopefully by Sunday evening, he's not going to be far off the pace. You'd imagine he shouldn't be because he was seventh overall two years ago and then in the rally three last year was eleventh, but he was starting sitting top six times on the second day. I just had a puncture on the first day last year. Mm-hmm. That ruled his chances of a really top result. But yeah, he's extremely quick and fantastic to watch. Loved loved yeah. his style of driving. He's really aggressive style of driving. He's great to watch. Mm-hmm. Um Johnny Greer, like six, like Johnny as I said before, loads of times it's just a slow starter, but his times actually the last couple of years of West Cork have all been the top three on the second day. You know, mm-hmm. so I mean he's put Callum under serious pressure the last two years. Um the new Ryan Lockwood in the seven has never done West Cork before. So that's an interesting one, but was very, very good in Galway. Mm-hmm. You know, set some blinding times in Galway. So he's you know, he's somebody that'll it'll probably take him a bit of time, but you know, but Ryan's quick everywhere he goes anyway. It doesn't matter, you know, and what it doesn't matter what he's driving. He's he's <laughs> he's quick. And then you have like so David Kelly and James Ford, uh, Declan Boyle, like they've all they've all done West Cork before. Mixed mixed results on them, but you know they'll be guys that you know they'll be there. To, you know to, what, waiting the wings, I suppose. Like Gary Kiernan did and Eddie Darty will be two more. Eddie can be very good result to Mayo. Mm-hmm. And Gary's done West Cork, God, how many times at this stage? Not always been his luckiest of it, but when he has finished, it's always been winning a trophy of some sort. So mm-hmm. you know all those guys will be. If we go ahead for leather in the course of the local the local um group, then you'll have David Guest. Cal McCarthy, Owen Murphy, Jason McSweeney, all those four guys will be looking for top West Cork honours out of it. Jason won it last year. Um, you know, but all all any of those four guys will be, you know, hoping to and there'll be more guys behind them as well looking to get ahead of them. But they'll be the four guys look probably favourites to to um 
get the top honours for local drivers anyway. Yeah, because uh, those them. four seem to push each other on too, don't they? And they, they, do, they push they each do, other yeah. further and further up the leaderboard. Do, well, I'm not sure what Cal, but I think definitely I know Owen Murphy and David Gess and Jason between they've all won with best court driver before anyway. So um, Cal has been there thereabouts once or twice and has you know, a bit of lucky in Galway, but has had really good results, really good performances mm-hmm. over the last number of months anyway. So again, he won't be that far away. Um, and that's only the, the, mod- the that's only the modigated classes. Like yeah. you go into the, the modifieds, then you go to you know, yeah. different league altogether. You know, you knew James Stafford and you have John Dalton back out and Kevin Eves and these boys and all. Mm-hmm. It's, look, compared to some years like last year, obviously, we had Daniel McKinnon, Chris Armstrong and uh, Jason Black. They're not there this year, but still, there's still quality there. Like you have Jonathan Pringle and Gary McPhillips, who've never done the rally before. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's interesting as well. So, I'll see how they get on. Um, yeah. And like Frank Kelly Frank sings there, West Cork's yeah. praises to anybody that listened to him, you know? Yeah, so. exactly. And Damien Toners has, you know, some good results there as well in West Cork, you know. And mm-hmm. um, good to see him there. Conor Murphy as well, you know. So, there's. There's plenty more behind him as well that'll push them as well and keep them honest. You know, so. Yeah, and then, I suppose we should you know, before we move on as the top of the, the field as well. You know, like you mentioned, you know Keith Crone, local man too. Like I would say, he would like to claim you know the bragging rights been you know been uh, a local event to himself as well. Well, yeah, exactly. I think Daniel actually won best West Cork driver two years ago. I think actually he obviously would have had it back in sixteen, but mm-hmm. I mean Keith has only won two international rallies in Ireland, and both of them have been Galway. You know, so. <laughs> It would be nice to add a couple more to that. I would imagine Killarney and, and West Cork would probably be up there as among his preferred ones to win. Mm-hmm. Um, a very close winning to the goal, of course, a, few, uh, a couple of years ago as well. But yeah, I mean, if he's on the form he was in in Galway, he will be hard stopped. There's no question. He's an exceptionally mm-hmm. talented driver. So himself and Milky are very, very good team. Um, you know, maybe West Cork's roads and, and maybe the conditions, depending now how it goes, mightn't be as mightn't be as challenging as what you might find in Galway, for example, in February. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I think, I think, you know, Keith will still be the man to watch and to catch, I think, because mm-hmm. he just hit the ground running this year when he's come back into that car. And, you know, he's, he's just exceptionally talented. For sure, for sure. And then Matt Edwards, you know, like, you know, Matt was unlucky in, in Galway, but when he come back, like, on the Sundays, you know, the times were just right on the nail as well, too. So, you know, if he gets a, the, the wee bit of luck and a good one behind him, he's not going to be far away either. No, he won't. And I mean, he's been here in 2019 as well. I mean, he had a great battle with um with Tom Cave that year, you know, behind Alice Fisher and Craig Green, but none of them were actually that far apart from each other. And I mean, to be honest, I mean, you know, Matt was probably out. He's probably a bit more, we'd say, car ready now than he would have been when he would have done West Cork in 19 anyway. You know, mm-hmm. he's a bit more, um, you know, obviously he hasn't been out exceptionally often, but when he has been, he has been quick. Obviously, he's done the goal experiences in the last, in the last couple of years as well. We'll have stood to him as well. So, um, I, yeah, I think he'll be there, thereabouts. If he can get, you know, it's like anything with any, any of the guys, if they can get through the first four stages, the two of them in the night, and, you know, I suppose shuffling for position and wall positions the following day. And, you know, they're really like, almost like shake those stages in a way mm-hmm. just to get a good position on the road the following day. And, and um, yeah, I think it's, it'll be interesting to see how it'll go. And it'll be interesting to see how or who will adapt to the night stages better. Obviously, the younger lads you always feel will have that slight bit more of an advantage, but then they're all none of them are particularly old anyway. So um, they'll be, yeah. I think it'll be just be very interesting. Anyone who's done probably rallied in the UK will be used to having done some night night stages or in Europe. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, it'll be it'll be yeah. Be and good like, I think the Ulster kind of showed that you know there's time to be midnight as well too. You know, like uh, maybe the the horrendous weather conditions didn't help the, the Ulster as well. But you know, there could be ten or fifteen seconds found that you know mightn't be found in, in the stage in daylight where suddenly you know you're up 10 or down 10 yeah. just you know, very quickly could be I, I can't really remember how it worked in back in 2018 when donna was there but i do remember donna saying it was extremely challenging for him obviously he was a bit older than some of the guys that were behind him chasing him even though he had this to focus but he did say like it was a stage and it was only one run in the night that time mm-hmm. but he did feel that uh it, it was a difficult stage for him because he wouldn't have been as used to driving nights compared to some of the other guys but uh yeah, it, it could be uh, certainly a very big leveler, especially with all the cars. That would have very kind of a, an even keel. Like, you know, the cars now aren't, you know, as, as far apart in, in spec as they would have been maybe back six, seven years ago when you had world cars still going. Mm-hmm. So it'll be, um, yeah, it'll be very interesting. It'll be interesting as well to see, of course, how the top modifiers will do in that as well. I mean, some of those guys, you know, bravery will go a long way there as well. Mm-hmm. And then there'll be some of them, you know, would have competed in Killarney there in the end of uh, 2023. Well, you know, they'll be 
not used to it, but they'll have a wee bit of experience in it as well. Exactly, I think so. Yeah, you know, it's it's probably something that we haven't had as much experience of in Ireland, bar the historic lakes over in the past number of years, or like that, the Ulster as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, it it makes a nice change. It'll be interesting to see how it goes, and hopefully all go fine. And you know, as I said, it's certainly like the two stages, Balinascarty or Osmore, will be you know. Uh, well-known stages or relatively well-known are the end those stages we use our elements of the well-known parts of those stages so uh, they're all I think they're all about 11 or 12k anyway so you know they I think um, and they're good roads as well like you know they will be they, they'll be you know pretty, pretty decent roads to drive on as well I don't see any huge issues with them they're not mountainy roads or anything like that <laughs> and then you know the that class that's really coming to the fore now in the, the last year or so is the Rally 4 category now and you know this Delantis Cup you know, there's, a, I think, 11 starters from it. And then, the, you know, there's other guys out in Fiestas and all too. Like, that's going to be some battle over the weekend as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Actually, Keelan Grogan won it last year. Um, Keelan's there now again this year with Ryan McHugh. And they had a super, super battle in Galway. You mm -hmm. know, they were to the last stage. They knew Craig Rahan as well, who got some car time in Mayo as well. And was exceptionally good in the uh, in the Mark II. So, you know, if he gets, you know, if he gets used to that car, I think he'll be there there about. So you've, you've Ewan Lloyd, who's a serious pilot. I think you know he's going to be there thereabouts. Mm -hmm. it's like just there's there's loads of lads there. There's no any, any one of them are capable of you know putting in a good performance. I mean, he, I think last year was Keaton's first time doing West Cork, and um, he won the he won the category. And you know, okay, he had to fight hard to win it, but it just mm -hmm. goes to show that if you know that you don't have to know the stages to, to come down and do well there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like these young guys that's coming up through now, like with all the training they're getting through MA Academy and the you know the work they're putting in themselves, they are capable of just turning up, doing a really good Ricky and putting in a strong performance. You know, they they don't seem to need to take that two three years to build up experience of events. They can just seem to go and adapt really quickly. I suppose see they're young yet. They haven't, they haven't found a fear gene yet. <laughs> they could be as much as that. Yeah, they do. That too. Yeah, they do um... <laughs> Yeah, they, like and they are, there, there is there is a lot of talent. There is no question. They really are. Um, they're 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 good guys out there and good girls, whatever. Mm -hmm. The academy is who's drivers to the fore as well. So, you know, it's all helping and it's getting. I suppose it's giving them experience to try different kinds of events and different countries. And you know, as I said, we're lucky here that we're getting to see them. You know, okay, some mightn't go abroad ultimately, but at least. We're getting to see some really good drivers here on our own shores, you know, while they're trying to make the break shoot it. Some might never want to travel, some may do, but at least we're lucky enough to have them here from the start. And then, you know, wherever they decide to go after that, you know, we can say at least we saw them to action when we were starting out, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, you know, because they're so good, and you know, I think that's helping spread out. You know, it's not just confined to them. They're pushing other guys on to try and get to their pace as well, and that's filtering out through you know whether it's with co-drivers or all the competitors or whatever, and that's lifting everybody's pace. It is, and I suppose I mean if you look at a Caleb Divine, back in twenty eighteen would have been driving a Fiesta or two type car, you know, a turbo car in West Cork at that time, mm -hmm. and had a really good drive. But like William Crichton came over here in the in the future two eight, or came down here in the two eight first, and I suppose he's probably the best example in terms of you know we're getting we're lucky to get to see him in action here now. As he's gone through the ranks with different types of cars trying it out. I know he does himself and Liam do like doing West Cork anyway. I've said it was one of their favourite events, but but it's great to see where he started from six, seven years ago doing West Cork and then coming to here now with a rally two car, which is up there with the best of them. Yeah, and he's coming back as world champion as well, too. You yeah, know, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's it, yeah, exactly. He's entitled to his name and it shows that, you know, it probably is an inspiration for those guys coming on behind. Mm -hmm. you know, and show them a pathway that they, you know, obviously you need a little bit of luck along the way as well, but it's had a bit of backing and everything else. But you have to, you have to be able to drive those cars as well. And William can certainly drive. There's no question. That's for sure. And then, you know, it's, it's not a one mate category, but the level of competition in the the historics, like those guys there too. Like you know, again, a really strong entry. Twenty four, I think, isn't it starting? It's 20, yeah, twenty four historics there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, the level there yeah. is fantastic, and it's been really well supported by the the English and Welsh crews, particularly this year. Yeah, it is. And it's funny actually. If you look at the seat in there, it was um the top the top two lads from last year were uh, Duncan Williams and, and Wayne Ev and Wayne Evans. They came first and second. Only seat the seven and eight this year, but it shows the quality that's out there at the very right front. You know, I mean, like Neil Williams and Anthony Sullivan would have been favourites last year, but they got a puncture. And you know, I mean, Anthony lives on hard field anyway. He knows the stage, but Neil is an exceptionally quick driver anyway. Um, so it's, he'd have to be favoured. But in like Marion Evans. Didn't have any luck last year. He came over out winning Galway. I think he damaged the steering in the first stage and it was pretty much out. And that was him done. And that was like a big loss even very early on. And then you Ray Breen, like was Ray is really quick, getting really quick in that super. And I was really getting used mm -hmm. to that car. So yeah. he's there thereabouts. Like you've um, 
Thomas Davis is very experienced in West Cork. He's, I'd say he's driven in, in lots, lots of types of cars in West Cork at this stage mm-hmm. um, and can't be ruled out. You have um, you have Tom Clark. Tom is extremely quick. You know, Tom was, wasn't that far away in West Cork last year. So there's like there's lots of guys there. I mean, you could really keep going. Obviously, an interesting one when you have um, Greg Cozier from Barb- Barbados coming over as yeah. well. You know, and the Mark One Escort's a fabulous looking car. You know, you've Gwyneth Evans from Wales coming over for what his 20th time, I think. You know, and still, still as competitive as any of them. You know, yeah. so you know, mm-hmm. it's great to see. So uh, yeah, it's it should be an interesting battle. They'll get for the first time. They're going to get the two full days now, Saturday and Sunday. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting. So they'll be kicking off Saturday morning. They get 14 stages rather than 10 this year. So it'll they'll mm-hmm. uh, they'll have a good a good one at it now, all going well. Yeah, and then the the juniors as well. Uh, you know, uh, we've seen maybe in the last sort of last year, or so uh, junior numbers kind of fallen off a wee bit, but they they seem to be coming back again this year. Yeah, West Coast are very strong. Very yeah. solid with twelve. Yeah, we twelve of them, and it's, it's probably pretty static this year. And last year, with eleven or twelve last year too. But yeah, it, it is, and it's still a very good category for those wanting to start out. It's obviously yeah. it's it's overrun by Civics. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, the Civics are, are probably the easiest car to procure for that situation and whatever. But yeah, and again, there's two low, three low, three court guys at the top: Evan McAvoy and um, Aaron Brown and Barry McIntyre and. Like certainly, particularly with Evan and Aaron, uh, or sorry, Kyle Brown and Aaron Brown, Kyle, Kyle Brown, two East Cork guys there, they'll be really, um, they'll be really going hell for leather at it. You know, it'd be very interesting to see how that one will, will pan out. But and then there'll be other guys like Ronan Lacey and Dylan Sheehan, Graham Roach. You know, these are all guys that some of them haven't that many much rally has done, but be interesting. The next, the next hero always comes out of there somewhere. You know, there's always That's someone true. who moves on from it. You know, so mm-hmm. yeah, so it looks like it should be. Um, that should be a good one. They'll get the six stages on Sunday, so um, okay. you know to get some good stages in that in that as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And then you know we we always say about you know how important sponsors is for the event as well too. And like you are blessed down there because you know the whole community takes this rally on board as well. Yeah, I mean, look, you have, you have to thank the likes of, let's say, you know, you have the Clinical Chamber of Commerce. Well, first and foremost, maybe the West Cork Rally Committee, the guys down there that pull everything together, you know, and then obviously with the sponsors through and the Clinical Park Hotel, which has been the title sponsor and the, uh, you know, the headquarters for over 20 years now, has been a fantastic arrangement and, uh, uh, you know, it's a win win for everyone, really, because it's such a fantastic facility down there. Then you have the Chamber of Commerce and Clinical, you have um, Clinical Black Pudding, Cattle Ireland, Gahan Ready Mix, and Cork County Council have all been very, very supportive. So, um, you know, again, you can't really, you you can run an event certainly to point, but you can run the quality of the event that you want to run without that kind of backing. You have to have good backing and you have to have solid backing and support from everywhere. And they do, and as, as we said before, people do buy into the event. It's really, it's fantastic for the local economy. You know, um, you know, you have to say that, you know, you have to take everyone involved from, you know, from sponsors, residents, marshals, you know, the council, the guards, and anyone else who helps to make the event happen because, there is, uh, there's any amount of work goes into it. Um, uh, we have Ronan Comerford this year doing Chief Marshal with Emily O'Driscoll as his deputy, and they've they've done a massive amount of work. Um, you know, they've pulled in a huge amount of marshals so far, which is great to hear. And you know, it's great to see young, you know, like Ronan's younger lads coming out and helping and doing stuff on the ground. Yeah. So, and he's, you know, he's he's doing a really good job so far. So hopefully now that it'll all work out from on the weekend. But yeah, he's, you know, they're they're really putting their work, they're putting the effort into it. So, you know. Yeah, because it, it is great to see that younger generation and like Motorsport Ireland started, like, you know, the Junior Marshall, you know, initiative as well, too. And, you know, and getting involved with the road safety campaigns and all that. It's yeah. great to see so much positivity about rallying at the moment as well. There is. I mean, it's all, it's, it is all very positive. There's a lot of work we put into it. And, you know, it's good to see that you know, they're getting younger people involved in it because, I mean, you know, it's no point in having a sport for older people because the sport, any sport will die away if you don't get younger blood into it. And you do need to get that into it. And, mm-hmm. you know, getting people, it's not all about just competing. It's great to get them to do some work on the ground and see how things are run and, you know, come up with ideas of their own as well. Because just because something will be done for the same way for 30 years doesn't mean it's the right way or yeah. can't be improved upon, you know, they come up with ideas and ways of doing things and they should be supported doing that. That's for sure, that's for sure. And like, you know, if anybody wants to get involved in Marston, I suppose, contact uh, Ronan. He has a, a Facebook page there and I'm sure he'd be more than happy to, to get me hear from you. Yeah, exactly. I'd actually draw a number for Ronan Hendy there, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, definitely you'll get hold of Ronan. Um, and as I said, he's a, good, he's a good lad and as I said, he's put a good bit of work into this. So hopefully that he, it'll, all, it'll all come together from on the weekend and uh, then he'll get all the support he needs. That's for sure. And um yeah, and I suppose really there's there isn't much else other than I suppose just to give a rundown of the menu for the weekend, I suppose yes. for want of a better way of putting mm-hmm. it. Um so scrutiny is actually going to be on Thursday from five to seven for anybody who wants to do it, um, in Clonakilty Car Centre. 
And then on Friday, it'll be from 7 to 11 a.m. And obviously, with our earlier start in the evening time. So the showgrounds in next to the industrial hall in near the uh, quality, or the kind of keep calling the old name, kind of guilty park hotel, um, is the park firm for the weekend. Okay, so a handy location. So on half three, then on Friday, the cars are going to be leaving that to go to service. So the first stage is kicking off in Ballinascarty at 16.28, so just nearly half past four. And the second one of that will be at quarter to seven. That'll be the first dark dark stage. So Ross Moore is paired with that. So Ross Moore happens after that. The cars come back in for service in the uh, Clonic Guilty uh, Business and Technology Park, which is just outside Clonic Guilty. It's a massive uh, tarmac business park that hadn't been used in about 15, 16 years. So um, it's a great facility to have and very easy to get to, and it's open to the public. So that's um, no, that's great to uh, to have that. So that service will be after stage two. And then <clears throat> after stage four, the cars will come back into Clonakilty into the, um, there's no ceremony to start, obviously, because of the way things are going now. So mm-hmm. with the stages, but what there will be will be fan zone type thing on um, Friday evening with Andy and Killian. So they'll come off to stage four and they'll go into where the ceremony to start would have been in previous years in Aston Square and Clonakilty. And Andy and Killian will talk to the crews that they come off to four stages before they go back into Park Fermi for the night. Okay. So that's, that should be that should be an interesting idea. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> yeah, so then Saturday then is the big day. Then you have Clogock and Castletown as the starting stages. Um, a bit different to the last couple of years. Castletown hasn't been used like that since 2003. Uh, Clogock has been used in about six years. Ring and Dunworley, uh, the afternoon ring has changed a little bit at the end of it. Dunworley hasn't been used in that format since 2006 or seven. I think it's been a good number of years. Uh, so it's so a new roads for a lot of people there, actually. And Sunday, we're going to Ardfield and Grandor, which we have been to for 10 years, which is a seriously good test, typical test. And sell across around the whole thing off. So top days rallying Sundays again, six stages, mm-hmm. but very, you know, long stages and you know, plenty of work in them. So there's plenty of mileage for everyone, definitely. Either the rally will not be over until it's over. No, I don't think it will be. It's just it's you know, it's just a lot more variable this year now, especially with the extra couple of stages at the start and the fact that there are a certain roads that probably very few drivers would have done. I suppose that's given me a chance to bring in uh, a mention on of um Joey O'Mani, local driver, is doing his 39th West Cork Rally this year. Uh, he's done most rallies since 1979, been a great supporter of the event. So I said he's just one short of the big 4 0 now once he gets started this year. Yeah. So, and Jordan O'Connor's going for his 27th rally. So, I mean, there's two local drivers. So, it's, it's I don't know if there's too many guys can say they've done 39 of their home rallies. No. <laughs> there's George, not many stages he hasn't seen at this stage. No, 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 exactly. And, um, and Jory's one of the uh, rallying gentlemen anyway. So, it's good to see him back out again this year. So, yeah. Um so um yeah, that's pretty much it. And, and uh, uh, Kelly and Nandy will be providing the coverage over the weekend. The coverage, yeah, over the weekend on the on the page notes, yeah. Yeah. They'll have all yeah. the updates and bits and bits and pieces, yeah. And, and uh, then they'll have a YouTube uh, show later, you know, yeah, the, the week, week yeah, after the program. Week. Yeah, exactly. That's the plan anyhow, yeah. So thanks to Kevin there and all our guests again this week. It's been an absolute pleasure hearing all the stories once again. And um, please like, share, rate, subscribe. All those things makes a difference. Uh so That's episode 15, season 3, so until next time, take care, speak soon, and bye!